In this video, I will talk about electrostatics. Electrostatics is, major, is majorly about charges at rest. When charges are at rest, they exert electrostatic forces on each other. And this electrostatic force is governed by a relationship that is known as Coulomb's law. According to Coulomb's, when there are two charges, let's say Q1 and then Q2, According to Coulomb's law, it states that the force of attraction between these two charges or the force of repulsion between two charges is the magnitude of that force. He said it is proportional to the product of the charges and then it is inversely proportional to the square of the distance between them. So let it, let's say they are separated by distance r. Okay, so we we'll have something of this nature F equal to K Q1 Q2 upon R squared, where K is a constant of proportionality and is equal to 1 over 4 pi epsilon naught, and the value of this is 9 times 10 raised to power 9 with the unit of Newton meter squared per Coulomb squared. So you can know this new unit by making k the subject of the formula in this formula. If you can make k the subject of the formula, then you can find the unit of that particular formula. Now so this is the formula that is that is derived by the by Coulomb's law. Now when charges are in space, let's say a positive charge is placed beside a a, a negative charge okay q2 and this is q1 the direction of this force that they exert on each other is always on a straight line that is joining the two of them together let's say they are separated by distance r okay so according to the the law which states that like charges repel and unlike charges attract okay um, if you notice, you see that this formula is it looks like the universal gravitation law formula, but the difference is that in Coulomb's law, we do, it deals with charges. It has to do with charges, and if it has to do with charges, the forces will be attractive or repulsive. But in in universal gravitation law, which is F equal to g m one m2 over r squared is majorly about masses when two masses are in space and in this law the masses are always attracting each other because masses are made to attract each other they don't repel okay but charges can repel they can attract now when like charges that is if they have the same charge for instance q1 is positive in this sense and then q2 is negative according to that law it states that they will attract each other it means that q1 will it means that q1 will move in this direction and then q2 will also move in this direction on a straight line now this is it the force when q1 is placed on the space and then q2 is placed and they have opposite charges q1 is feeling a force that is attracting it to Q2 that's why it is moving in that direction of Q2 it is moving towards Q2 it is being attracted by Q2 and I will call the force F12 that is the force on one on charge one by what by charge two okay now q2 we when immediately i put q2 on that space in space and because of the presence of q1 which is positive it will be attracted towards q1 it will be attracted towards q1 as a result i will refer to that as f21 that is the force on q2 by one so if you just place a charge in space, nothing will happen to the charge. 
whether positive or negative but because if i now put another one maybe positive now it will need to repel each other so this will move in this direction this will also move in this direction because of the presence of this so immediately i put let's say this is q2 and this is q1 immediately i put this q2 it will it will move in this direction of the arrow so that is force on two due to one it is in that direction it must be repelled according to that law so if i put so q12 we also need to move in this direction that is force on one due to two so the magnitude of this force f12 and f21 they are equal according to coulomb's law they are equal but opposite so we can write it in a more in a better way in form of a vector so it looks like this minus f1 f21 okay so this is a better way to write that law that is they are equal but opposite so for this one i can put the sign of magnitude showing that their magnitude are the same the magnitude of the forces are the same so majorly i can rewrite coulomb's law in a better way that is the magnitude of the force of attraction between force of attraction or repulsion between two charges is equal to k the magnitude of the charges that means if i have a question i don't need to include the sign of the charge because it only has to do with the magnitude magnitude means amount only the amount so we will solve some problems that will explain this on a better note now you should note the implication of this over r squared is that according to there's what we refer to as inverse square law so we will notice from this that f is proportional to 1 over r squared it obeys inverse square law inverse square law just like this formula to inverse square law and the implication is that if the distance between two charges are, are doubled it will mean that we have something of this nature k into q1 q2 over 2r the distance is now double 2r squared which is the same thing as k q1 q2 over 4r squared so it is the same don't forget this is the force it means the force is 1 upon 4 dot k q1 q2 upon r squared so it means that the force is reduced by 1 over 4 that is the force is reduced by one quarter okay but then if we if we reduce the distance by half let's say you reduce it into two into half the force will be increased by four times its initial value so let's solve some problems if two charges of one coulomb separated in air by distance one kilometer what would have what would have been the electric force between them okay now if two equal charges that means q1 is equal to q2 they are the same so we can say it is q okay now and is equal to one coulomb and they are separated by distance d or r we have been using r which is equal to one kilometer and kilo actually means 10 raised to power 3 that's what kilo means now to find the electric force between them according to coulomb's law we know that k q1 q2 that is the magnitude of the two charges and then we have square of the distance so k is 9 times 10 raised to power 9 in that unit and then we have the product of q1 and q2 but the question says it is one coulomb the same thing as one squared 
now r squared does 1 times 10 raised to the power 3 squared okay so if you press this on your calculator that will be equal to 9000 newton or 9 kilo newton as the case may be all right let's solve another problem two point charges q1 equal to plus 25 nano coulomb don't forget coulomb is the unit of charge and nano means 10 raised to the power minus 9 and then q2 is a negative charge okay and they are separated by this distance find the magnitude and direction of the electric force that exerts q1 on q2 and q2 on q1 now let's do that let's say this is q1 it is positively charged okay and then it has a magnitude of 25 nano that's times 10 raised to the power minus 9 coulomb and then we have another positive charge which is q2 it is negatively charged okay uh, it has a value of 75 times 10 raised to the power minus 9 coulomb now because of the presence of q2 which is negative q1 should be attractive so it will move in this direction that is f on one due to two and because of the presence of the positive charge q2 should also move in this direction that is f on two due to one and according to coulomb's law we know that the magnitude of the force these forces are equal okay it is just that they are opposite in direction so to find f12 which is always the same thing in magnitude as f21 so we don't need to find the forces separately we can just find it at once okay now that will be k according to the formula k q1 q2 upon r squared magnitude which means that i don't need to include the charge so k is i, I don't need to include the sign of the charge okay and then q1 what is q1 q1 is 25 nano okay and then q2 is 75 nano nano means 10 raised to power minus 9 over distance squared the distance r is centimeter 3 centimeter and centi means 10 raised to power minus 2 so we just have to square that 3 times 10 raised to power minus 2 squared okay if you press this correctly on your calculator you should have 0 0.01875 which is the same thing as 0 0.019 newton okay that's the magnitude of the char of the forces that is f12 is equal to 0 0.019 newton along the direction or towards q2 so we can just write f12 is 0 0.019 newton towards towards q2 while f21 is 0 0.019 newton towards q1 okay so that's just how to do something of that nature let's move a little bit further two point charges are located on the x-axis of a coordinate system now let's say this is the x-axis of the particular coordinate system okay now the question says q1 is at x equal to plus two centimeter so let's say this is zero and then this is two centimeter okay two centimeter that means i need to put q1 right here and of course q1 is positively charged the sign of the charge is always very very important and then we have q2 which is negatively charged at x equal to four centimeter so that means from the from this point it to this point is two then this should be two as well so that this place from 
this point to this point will be 4 cm okay so i just need to have q2 right here and q2 is negatively charged now it's negatively charged because i can see the sign right here okay now what is the electric force exerted by q1 and q2 on charge q3 which is positively charged and is at x equal to zero that means this is the point where we can find our q3 okay and the question says it is positively charged all right so but the question says what is the force that this q3 we feel due to q1 one what is the force that this q3 will feel due to q2 two that's just the question now to find the amount or the magnitude of the force that q3 we feel due to q1 that will be equal to k q3 q1 over r squared that is the force now is between charge q1 and q3 okay and the distance of their separation the distance of their separation is two centimeter which must be converted to centimeter and centi means 10 is to power minus two okay now let's just solve now f31 will be equal to f31 will be equal to k k which is 9 times 10 is to power 9 and then q3 q3 is actually it has a magnitude of 5 nano and nano means 10 is to power minus 9 and then q1 has a value of 1 nano that's 1 times 10 is to power minus 9 upon the square of the distance between them okay so i have something of this nature so finally if you press this on your calculator okay 1.125 1 times 10 is to power minus 4 newton and of course i can just rewrite this by the knowledge of standard form or we may just neglect that or if you want to we can just move it to 1 2 so that it will become 1 1 2 0.5 then times 10 is to power minus 6 newton so we can write it as 112.5 micronewton or if you are pleased with this we can just go ahead and use this as the particular answer but in case of objectives now let's see okay that is our f31 then let's find f on the force on charge 3 due to charge 2 let's find the magnitude that will also be k q3 and then q2 upon the square of the distance that is 9 times 10 to power 9 okay and then q3 of course q3 is 5 times 10 to power minus 9 that's 5 nano and then q2 q2 is 3 nano 3 times 10 to power minus 9 over square of the distance what is the distance between q3 and q2 it is 4 centimeter and that's 4 times 10 to power minus 2 because centi means 10 to power minus 2 is a must for you to convert 4 centimeter to meters that's 4 times 10 to power minus 2 meters so if we press this on the calculator we should have that will be 8.4375 times 10 to the power minus 5 newton so in the same way we can have it as 843.75 micronewton or times 10 to the power minus 6 first in newton which is the same thing as 84 3.75 micro newton so this is your standard form this is what we got from the calculator so if you want to use the standard form we move it twice one two so by moving it twice we need to add minus two i mean minus 
oh this times 10 is to power minus 5 so we just need to move it once so if i move it once so that i'll add minus 1 to this and this will be minus 7 i should have 84.3 so let me erase this now I should have 84.375 then times 10 to the power minus 6 newton which is the same thing as 84.375 micronewton so that is the magnitude of the force that Q3 will feel as a result of Q2 now we want to find the total to find the total electric force that's what the question says but don't forget that force is a vector quantity now the total force that q3 will feel is the sum of f31 that is the force on 3 due to 1 plus f32 the force of 3 due to charge 2 that's the sum now but don't forget that force is is a vector quantity it has to it must be added in magnitude and direction so let's see the directions of f31 f31 is the force on 3 due to 1 and 1 is positively charged they are like charges so immediately i put q3 bam immediately i put q3 on the x-axis it will be repelled that is it will move away from q1 simply because of the presence of q1 which is positively charged so immediately i put q3 on the x-axis it will move away it will be repelled so this is the direction of f3 due to charge one i mean this is the direction of charge theory due to charge one now let's see what will happen because of charge two now let's say there's no charge one here now if i replace if i put q3 on the x-axis because charge 2 is negatively charged it must be attractive so q3 will move towards q2 so this is the direction of f32 okay that means let's say this side is the positive axis positive x axis and this side is the negative x axis and of course that's the way it should be now that means f32 is moving towards the positive x axis and f31 is moving towards the negative x axis so i can say minus f31 and then plus f32 you can see i don't have arrows on them again i don't have arrows on them again because this is the magnitude okay so i can write it in a better way now minus f31 f31 is 1.125 times 10 is to power minus 4 then i'll add it plus i'll add it to f32 which is 8.4375 times 10 is to power minus 5 okay so let's press that on the calculator so we know the total force and of course by adding this we got we got minus 2.8125 times 10 raised to power minus 5 and that is of course it means that the magnitude of the electric force of the total force on charge q3 the magnitude is 2.8125 times 10 raised to power minus 5 in the direction in the direction of of the one with the negative that is negative x axis in the direction of f31 so in the direction of the negative x axis so it means that the total when we had f31 and f32 together it gave us a negative value meaning that the net force is in this direction the net force in the is in the direction of the negative x-axis that means f31 is greater 
than F32. The influence of F31 is more than the influence of F32. So the net force is in the direction of F31. So and that's the answer. In 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 another format, you can write this and then use the I and J format. So I can put my I here and then this will be a positive I as well, meaning that I'm dealing with X axis. I is for X axis and J is for Y axis. So eventually this we have I and this you have I too. Okay, that means this you have I. It's just a way of showing the direct showing that a force is a vector quantity. So this is the final answer right here. Okay. So let's solve another problem. I hope you understand. The question says find the force on the center charge. By now you should be able to find the force on the center charge. You should be able to solve this question. So I would advise that you pause this video and attempt this question. Okay. Now let's say we want to find the force on the center charge. That means we want to find the force that Q2 will feel due to Q3. And the force that Q2 will feel due to Q1. So let's say, let's first of all talk about the direction. Now, the force that, because of the, when immediately I place Q2 in space, in along that line, immediately I place Q2 along the line, because Q2 is negative and Q1 is positive, it must be attractive towards Q3. So that means the force that 2 we feel due to 3 is towards Q3. Also, immediately I place Q2 on that axis, it must be attracted to Q1 too because Q1 and Q2 are also opposite in charge. Okay, so I will have force on 2 due to 1 you know, in that direction as well. So that's how we find direction just assume that the particular charge that you are considering immediately you put it in which direction will you move towards okay and don't forget that like charges repel unlike charges attract so if we say this direction is positive x-axis and this direction is negative that means the total force that q2 we feel F2, the total force that Q, F, Q2 charge 2 with fuel is plus F23 minus, minus F21. That's just it. That is, plus is showing the direction of F23 and minus is showing the direction of F21. That's just it. Now, let's quickly find F23. F23 will be KQ2. Q3 upon R squared. Don't forget the magnitude sign. Now K is what? K is 9 times 10 raised to the power 9. And then Q2. What is Q2? Q2 is 4 nano. That's 4 times 10 raised to the power minus 9. And then Q3. What is Q3? Is 8 nano. Okay. Over R squared. That means the distance between Q2 and Q3. And that's 2 meter. That's 2 squared, which is the same thing as 4. So if you press this on your calculator, you should have something of this nature. 7.2 times 10 raised to the power minus 8 Newton. But I can use the standard form to convert it to 10 raised to the power minus 9, which means nano, so that the final answer will also be in nano. So that means if I want to add minus to this, which will make it minus 9, if I want to add minus 1 to this, which will make it minus 9, I need to move this to the front. So I will have 72 times 10 raised to the power minus 9 in Newton. So that is 72 nano Newton. Okay. Now let's quickly find F, F21. F21 will be K, which is 9 times 10 raised to the power 9 multiplied by q2 and of course q2 is 4 times 10 raised to the power minus 9 and then i need to multiply it by q1 which is 2 nano 2 times 10 raised to the power minus 9 upon the square of the distance between them that's 4 squared and that must of necessity be equal to 
that's 4.5 times 10 raised to power minus 9 newton it is the same thing as 4.5 nano newton because nano is, is just a prefix in physics nano means 10 raised to power minus 9 it is this micro also means 10 raised to power minus 6 we also have milli milli means 10 raised to power minus 3 we also have centi centi means 10 raised to power minus 2 we also have dec e, deci which is 10 raised to power minus 1 so those are we also have pico which is 10 raised to power minus 12 uh, that should be minus 12 okay so that's that now to find the total force now on charge 2 that will be equal to plus f23 f23 that's 72 nano then minus f21 what is f21 that's 4.5 nano that's equal to 72 minus 4.5 and that's equal to 67.5 67.5 and it's positive 67.5 nano newton or you can write it like this 67.5 times 10 to power minus 9 newton so this is the final answer the magnitude is 67.5 times 10 to power minus 9 in what direction in the positive direction positive means it is going towards q3 so you can see in the positive x direction and you can also see towards towards q3 which means that f23 is very very great the influence of f23 is more than the influence of f21 so when you place q2 in the middle it will move towards q3 it will not move towards q1 so that's it and the reason is just because q3 is greater than q1 that's just it so let's solve a little bit further three charges lie along the x-axis the positive charge q1 is 10 microcoulomb is at x equal to one meter now let's just have a formation uh, for the x-axis now so let's say this is at this is at the origin where x is equal to zero and then the question says that charge q1 is at x equal to one meter so one meter this is zero from this place to this place is one meter okay so now that means this is the position of q1 and the negative charge q2 equals to minus 2 microcoulomb is at the origin so at the origin we have charge q2 this is the origin zero this is the x-axis and this is one meter so from this point to this point is one meter now the question says where must a positive charge don't forget this is negative and this is positive okay from the question now where must a positive charge q3 be placed on the x-axis so that the resultant force on it will be zero now let's try to put that q3 right here and the question says it's a positive charge but we really don't know the position so the question says what position must it be placed must q3 be placed so that the resultant force on it will be equal to zero so let's say from this point now from the zero position to this position let's say it is hex okay now it will mean that the distance between q1 and q3 is supposed to be x minus one isn't it I hope you understand that if from this place to this place is x and from this place to this place is one then the remaining should be x minus one which means that if you had x minus one to one it must be equal to x so the distance between them is x minus one in meters now let's solve now let's find 
the force, the total force on charge Q3. Charge Q3 is positively charged. So I'm supposed to put positive right here, not negative. It's positively charged. So now let's see what will happen. Let's see the kind of force. Okay, before we do that, let's consider the direction of the forces that Q3 will feel. So this is Q3 right here. Now, Q3 will feel a force due to Q1 and it will be repulsive that is they will repel each other because immediately i put q3 on the x-axis because of this positive charge of q1 because of the presence of q1 because i'm considering q1 now because of the presence of q1 and because it is positively charged it has to be repelled so that is the direction of f the force on charge theory due to one it is in that direction it is positive now let's see the direction of the force that q3 will feel due to the presence of q2 don't forget q2 is positively charged and because q2 is positively charged q3 will move towards it so this is the direction of the force on theory due to the presence of charge 2 so it is negative and this one is positive so positive and negative so we can find the total force on q3 and the question says in what what position must q3 be placed on the x-axis so that the resultant force on it is equal to zero which means that f31 the resultant force that's plus f31 minus f32 because the resultant force is a vector form is the vector summation of all the forces and that's equal to f31 that's plus f31 minus f32 that's just it until it is equal to zero so i considered the direction i can also write the resultant force in this way i can say the resultant force is equal to vector of f31 plus vector sine of f32 so but now i have used negative but i'm not using the arrow meaning that i have included the direction that it is negative it is towards the negative x-axis or i can write it this way i can write this write it this way f31 i minus f32 i okay i can also write it like that too so if it is like this it will mean that f31 will be equal to f32 that is if i take minus f32 to the other side of the equation now we have something of this nature all right so what is f31 f31 should be k q3 q1 upon r squared and it should be equal to k q3 q2 upon r squared r squared is the distance between theory and two so let me just replace it by the distance immediately instead of having r so that we will not think the r is the same okay so what is the distance between q3 and q2 so what is the distance between q3 and q2 is x so this is x squared so this one will be what is the distance between q3 and q2 q1 and q3 that's x minus one meter so i should have x minus one right here x minus one meter squared okay now let's solve now it will mean that k can actually cancel out k isn't it and then q3 can actually cancel out q3 so i'll be left with q1 upon x minus 1 squared equal to q2 upon x squared let me substitute q1 q1 is supposed to be 10 micro coulomb that's 10 raised to power minus 9 over x minus 1 squared that's supposed to be x squared minus 2x plus 1 equal to q2 q2 is 2 micro as well that's 10 raised to power minus 6 oh q1 is minus 6 too so i should have minus 6 
upon x squared so by knowledge of mathematics this will cancel out okay so it becomes very easy because now I should have 10 upon x squared minus 2x plus 1 equals to 2 over x squared so if you cross multiply you should have 2x squared minus 4x plus 2 equal to 10x squared so that by taking 10x squared to the left hand side of the equation you should have 2x squared whenever you do that whenever you transfer across the equal to sign the sign changes so because this is positive right here invisible positive when it comes to this side becomes negative so i will have 10x squared minus 4x plus 2 equal to 0 so i'll have negative 8x squared minus 4x plus 2 equal to 0 if you solve this very well if you solve this quadratic equation very well you should have x equal to 0 0.31 or 0 0.31 or minus 0 0.81 in meters that's option a very correct now let's solve another problem three point charges point charges are charges that are very very small like an atom so three point charges are arranged at the corners of a right angle triangle okay let's draw a right angle triangle oh the, the axes are given the axes are given that is q1 is 5 microcoulomb at 0 comma 0 meters so let's say this is the origin of that particular x axis of course this will be 0 comma 0 and that is the location of charge q1 that means it is at the origin and then we have charge q2 at you know the coordinate system is always written like this which means that the first one is x axis and the second one is y so on the x axis we have 0 0.1 that means from this point to this point there is 0 0.1 in meters so this will be charge q2 and y is 0 so it is still on this line now we also have charge q3 which is along x 0 0.1 meter that's this spot and y which is 0 0.1 meter that means i need to move up a little bit i need to move up with 0 0.1 so this one the first one gives the distance on the x axis the second one gives the distance on the y axis so this 0 0.1 on the x axis 0 0.1 on the y axis so this is the location of q3 so if I put Q3 right here, that means I can join I can join the right angle triangle now. So it will look like this. Alright, now let's find the question says find the resultant force that is exerted on Q3. And of course this is Q3. So the first thing is let's see the direction of the force that will happen. Let's see the the direction of Q3 we feel a force let's see let me know the sign q1 is positive q2 is negative and then q3 is positive okay q3 is a positive charge so by putting q3 on the axis on the corner of the right angle triangle it will feel a force let me start from q1 it will feel a force due to q1 okay and because q1 is positive and because q3 is also positive it has to be repulsive that is they will repel so it will it will move backwards in this direction so this is the force on charge 3 due to charge what charge 1 and then let's consider q2 now immediately i put q3 on the corner of the right angle triangle because of the presence of q2 which is negatively charged and of course it must be attractive it will move like this so this will be f2 due to that's f2 due to that's the force on charge 3 due to charge 2 so let me just bring that here now 
I have d axis. Okay. So this is f three two, and this is the axis. I have another one right here, which is what, which is f three one. So the direction of this axis, the the angle that will be right here. Let's say angle theta. What would the angle be? If you want to know what the angle will look like, it is the same angle that is right here that will be right here because it is just like having something like this so and putting angle theta right here so what theta is here is what theta will be right here and it's a right angle triangle which means that this is 90 degrees so the others will be 45 45 that means angle theta right here is 45 okay according to law of vectors i need to resolve so that f31 will fall on the x-axis so that i will have f31 on the x-axis and that will be equal to f31 cos 45 okay you can check my video where i talk about resolution of vector it will be suggested up here let me put an arrow okay then this one will be f31 y which of necessity must be equal to f31 sine 45 degrees so the resultant force on, on q3 the resultant force on q3 is equal to the resultant force on q3 is equal to f32 f32 should be negative because it is along the negative y-axis so i should have minus f32j that is it is along the negative y-axis plus f31 cos 45 okay what is cos 45 if you can remember cos 45 is root 2 over 2 which is 0 0.707 so let me just simplify this so that it will become uh, 0 0.707 f31 okay so instead of having to write cosine now i'll have um let me just cut this cosine off now i should have something of this nature i should have 0 0.707 okay then plus the sine of 45 that should be root 2 over 2 as well which is 0 0.707 and it's also positive i need to put j right here to show that it is along the positive y-axis so the second one too will be 0 0.707 f31 j okay that is it is on the positive y-axis no f31 0 0.07 is on the x-axis so this should not be j that should be high okay so we just have to erase that all right i hope you can understand if you don't understand let me know in the comment section so that i will just answer your question okay now i should have i right here i positive i that means it it is f31 is representing this and then because it is along the positive i that is positive x axis this is along the positive j that is positive y axis this is along the negative j negative y axis so that's why we have the signs so it is very good if we can now find f32 so that we can substitute into this and then we'll get the final answer now what is f32 f32 is k q3 q2 upon their distance the square of their distance so k is 9 times 10 raised to power 9 and q3 of course that is 5 micro that's 5 times 10 raised to power minus 6 and then q2 that is okay 2 micro 2 times 10 raised to power minus 6 upon the square of their distance the distance between q3 and q2 is 0 0.1 so it has to be squared now what is this on the calculator on the calculator 
so that will be equal to 9 9 newton now let's find f31 oh i made a mistake okay is, is correct f31 now f31 that's supposed to be k q3 q1 upon r squared now the reason why we needed to resolve this is because we do we can't use this along this axis we only need it on either x axis or y axis so we needed to resolve okay so you can check that video on resolution of vector so that's 9 times 10 is to power 9 and then q3 q3 is of course that should be 5 times 10 is to power minus 6 and then q1 q1 that should be 5 as well 5 times 10 is to power minus 6 coulomb then r squared the distance between them oh i've not found that the distance between q1 and q3 we can find that using the pythagorean theorem the pythagorean theorem is hypotenuse squared equal to opposite squared plus adjacent squared that means hypotenuse which is of course the longest side that's this place is equal to the square root of the opposite squared plus adjacent squared so this is the opposite this is the angle theta so it means this is the opposite and this will mean the adjacent so that is square root of opposite squared that's 0 0.1 squared plus uh, 0 0.1 squared as well 0 0.1 squared so if you press that on your calculator you should have something of this nature 0 0.1 squared plus 0 0.1 squared that should be 0 0.14 which is the same thing as root 2 over 10 so i would like to write that with the red pen root 2 over 10 so the distance is root 2 over 10 so we just need to square it all right so finally this will be equal to if we press this on the calculator okay that's equal to 11.25 newton so we can find the resultant force now will be equal to minus f32 that's minus 9j plus f31 what is f31 that's 11.25 multiplied by 0 0.707 i plus 0 0.707 multiplied by g i mean f31 which is 11.25 so if you have this does minus 9j plus okay that should be 11.25 multiplied by 0 0.007 which is 7.95 i then plus 7.95 j okay so 7.95 j would go with this okay because they are jj they are on the same line so i can say negative 9 plus 7.95 that's equal to minus 1.05 that means i'll have minus 1.05 j plus 7.95 i so that is, is the final answer that gives the resultant force that is exerted on q3 but we can also find the magnitude the resultant is like the total of this to find the resultant that will be equal to the square root of of this that's minus 1.05 squared you can also check my video where I talk about resolution of vectors. I explained all of this 7.95 squared. And if you press this on your calculator, you should have 9, I mean, 8, 8 0.02. And that's supposed to be in Newton. Now, 
daily charges are arranged as shown in the figure below find the magnitude and direction of the electrostatic force on the charge at the origin so our test charge the charge we are considering is the charge at the origin which is q2 so q2 immediately i put q2 on that axis it will feel a force due to q1 okay and because q1 is positively charged and q2 is also positive they are like charges so it must repel that means it will have to move in this direction also because of the presence of q3 because q3 is negative they are unlike charges so it should attract so q2 will have to move towards q3 okay so i can just have the directions right here so i have f on 2 due to 3 and then this one f on 2 due to 1 so that's the those are the directions okay now let's find the forces let's find the forces so f21 f21 that should be k q1 q2 upon r squared and of course k is equal to 9 times 10 is to power 9 I just need to multiply with q2 and of course q2 is 6 nano that's 6 times 10 is to power minus 9 and then 5 times 10 is to power minus 9 okay upon r squared that's 0 0.3 squared okay so this will be equal to 3 times 10 to the power minus 6 newton it is the same thing as 3 micro newton all right let's find f2 3 f2 3 is k q2 q3 upon r squared and that's equal to 9 times 10 to the power 9 multiplied by q2 which is 6 times 10 to the power minus 9 and q3 which is 3 times 10 to the power minus 9 q2 is supposed to be 5 so okay 5 times 10 to the power minus 9 and 3 and of course the distance between them is 0 0.1 okay the distance between this is 0 0.3 and the distance here is 0 0.1 so i have it as 0 0.1 meter squared okay and if you press this on your calculator you should have that's 1.35 1.35 times 10 to the power minus 5 newton i can convert it to 13.5 times 10 to the power minus 6 newton which is the same thing as 13.5 micronewton so it means that we can write it according to the direction so that the 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 electrostatic force on the charge at the origin is given by f23 plus f21 but f23 has a direction that is towards the negative y-axis that's minus 13.5 micronewton negative y-axis that's minus j because this sign this direction is minus j and this direction is minus i okay so i will just say then the other one which is minus 3 micro and then high negative i so that's the resultant force that's the force the total force on the charge at the origin so basically we can also find the resultant okay and the direction as well so to find the magnitude of f2 to find the magnitude of f2 that will be square root of minus 13.5 micro micro means 10 to the power minus 6 squared plus 
minus 3 times 10 raised to the power minus 6 squared okay so if i press that correctly i should have 1.38 times 10 raised to the power minus 5 in newton or one that or 13.8 times 10 raised to the power minus 6 newton which is the same thing as 13.8 micronewton so that's the result magnitude of the resultant electrostatic force now to find the direction since this is it to find the direction of the resultant okay we can actually put that right here and replace it with angle theta okay okay so what this resultant force actually means is that I have a, the magnitude of the force, a particular magnitude of the force on the negative x axis, and that's equal to 3 micro, 3 times 10 to the power minus 6, and then I have another one on the negative y axis, that's 13.5 times 10 to the power minus 6. Now, to get the direction, I can have my angle theta right here which is angle with the x-axis so and this will be the opposite of the angle which is the same thing as this that's 13.5 times 10 to the power minus 6 so we can find the angle theta because tan theta is equal to opposite which is 13.5 times 10 to the power minus 6 over adjacent which is 3 times 10 to the power minus 6 it will mean that angle theta is equal to the arc tan of 13.5 times 10 raised to the power minus 6 upon 3 times 10 raised to the power minus 6. Okay, that means theta is equal to that's 77.5. 47 in degrees if angle theta is equal to 77.47 in degrees that means i can have angle theta right here as 77.47 now to find the direction of the resultant direction of resultant we can only find it from the x-axis the positive x -axis. that's where direction starts from so if i measure it now and i measure that means it will cover the direction the direction will be equal to if i start from here when it covers this place that's 180 degrees and it also covers 77.47 so it's equal to 180 plus 77.47 degree okay because this is actually the resultant now and that's of course is equal to 180 plus 77.47 and that's equal to 257.47 in degrees so that's the direction the magnitude is 1.38 times 10 raised to the power minus 5 why the direction is 257.47 to find the ratio of the columbic force fe to the gravitational force fg between two electrons in vacuum that is we want to find the comparison between the columbic force and the gravitational force now the best way to do that is to say that the columbic force upon the gravitational force which is fg now we know that fe which is the columbic force is supposed to be equals to k q1 q2 upon the distance squared we know that it is an electron okay and the charge on an electron is given by 1.602 times 10 to the power minus 9 okay but before we do that let's divide divide by the gravitational force which is g m1 m2 upon r squared and of course it is the same thing as kq1 q2 upon r squared times r squared upon gm1 
m2 so i can actually cancel out this the distance between them so that i will have something of this nature i'll have k q1 q2 upon g m1 m2 and it is equal to here 9 times 10 raised to the power 9 and of course q1 q2 are the same because we have two electrons that means the magnitude of the charge is the same and the magnitude of each of the charge is 1.602 times 10 raised to power minus 19 it is given these are the parameters given from the question these are the parameters e equal to 1.602 times 10 raised to the power minus 19 and also ke that is the constant for the electrical force that's 8.99 times 10 raised to the power 9 and also the constant the gravitational constant is equal to 6.67 times 10 raised to the power minus 11 i'm writing all of this from the question these are the parameters given for the questions the parameters they want us to use the values of the constant that is required for us to use that means i won't have to use 9 times 10 raised to the power 9 i will want to use what is given from the question and that's supposed to be 8.99 8.99 times 10 raised to the power 9 okay then this one 1 1.602 times 10 raised to the power minus 19 that's the value of the charge on an electron upon g which is the gravitational constant that's 6.67 okay 6.67 times 10 raised to the power minus 11 multiplied by m1 m2 that's mass of the electron which is given by 9.11 times 10 raised to the power minus 31 the mass of the second one too is also an electron so they will have the same mass times 10 raised to the power minus 31 so if you press this on your calculator and you divide it correctly you should have 4.2 4.2 times 10 raised to the power 42 which is a very large value it means that the ratio of fe to fg is equal to 4.2 times 10 raised to the power 42 ratio 1 and that's the correct answer the implication is that the coulombic force the electrostatic force between two electrons is very very is of great influence than the gravitational force that's just the implication of that two protons in an atomic nucleus are typically separated by a distance of 2 times 10 raised to the power minus 15 meter that means the distance between two protons that we have been using r okay so r is equal to 2 times 10 raised to the power minus 5 in meters the electrical repulsion between the proton is huge but the attractive nuclear force is even stronger and keeps the nucleus from bursting apart what are the what is the magnitude of the electrical force between two protons that are separated by this so it means that we need to know the value of the charge on a proton the value of the charge on a proton 1.602 times 10 to the power minus 19 the same thing as that of electron so i can go ahead with my formula their force of attraction will be equal to k where k is 9 times 10 raised to the power 9 0.602 times 10 raised to the power minus 19 the square of the distance between them that's 2 times 10 raised to the power minus 5 squared and that's equal to 57.74 in newton 57 that's 57.74 okay that's supposed to be 57.5
two equal charges q1 is equal to q2 is equal to two microcoulomb are located at x equal to zero x equal to zero x is this is the point where x is zero and then y equals to minus 0.3 that means first one is located here they are positive charges they are positive charges the first one is located here and the second one is located there and they are separated by this distance okay so this is q1 and this is q2 two equal charges q1 and q2 are located at x equal to zero that's at this point and y equal to minus 0 0.3 respectively so that's what it means the minus shows that it is along the negative y axis this is q1 this is q2 all right so what are the magnitude and direction of the total electric force that q1 and q2 exert on a third charge q which is at x equal to 0 0.4 that is positive x axis that's 0 0.4 and y is zero so this is the line at on this line y is zero okay it's just like a graph when you have a graph when you have a graph this is zero comma zero and this is x one two three four like that and this is y so x y equal to zero on this line y equal to zero because at this point y is zero one to all this line y equals to zero and x is 0 0.4 so we can see this point okay so the third charge q is on this place and it is four microcoulomb now what is magnitude and direction that the force q1 and q2 we exert on the third charge so let's say the force on q by one okay the force on q by one that will be k q q1 upon r squared and that's equal to 9 times 10 raised to power 9 what is q q is 4 microcoulomb 4 times 10 raised to power minus 6 and q1 which is 2 micro 2 times 10 raised to power minus 6 upon r squared r is 0 0.4 okay now let's press that okay this is supposed to be 0 0.42 so if we do that that should be 0 0.45 in newton so let's talk about fq2 fq2 will feel a force and their distance will be this line okay and i need to find the distance because that's their hypotenuse the distance will be 0 0.4 squared plus 0 0.3 squared okay from the formula of pythagorean theorem because this is the hypotenuse okay hypotenuse squared is equal to opposite squared plus what adjacent squared so hypotenuse is equal to square root of opposite squared plus adjacent squared so that's it so if you do that correctly you should have 0 0.4 square root of 0 0.4 squared plus 0 0.3 squared okay and that will be equal to 0 0.5 0 0.5 so the distance between them is 0 0.5 so i can have now 0 0.5 squared okay it's very correct because if this is 0 0.3 this should be 0 0.4 and this should be 0 0.5 so i should have my k okay k which is 9 times 10 raised to power 9 I should have my Q2 Q2 is supposed to be 2 micro okay and then I should have my capital letter Q which is 4 micro so finally we should have okay 0 0.288 Newton now to know the resultant the magnitude of the total to find the total force that will be acting on q2 the total force you know force is a vector quantity the total force on charge q is supposed to be let's see what will happen it's supposed to be the vector form of force q1 plus the vector of force q2 
no let me see what we already know the ma magnitude of q1 that's 0 0.45 and we know the magnitude of 0 0.288 so let's see their directions it, by putting q on that particular axis because of the presence of q1 it will move let's see q is also positive and q1 is also positive the three of them are positively charged okay so that means if i put q because of the presence of q1 it will move in this direction it will be repelled that means fq1 is a repulsive force it will move in that direction and also the force due to due to charge q2 we also move in this direction so i'll have something of this nature this is supposed to be fq2 so and we normally have to resolve we normally have to resolve fq2 to the x axis and to the y axis so if i do that that means i'll have fq1 i that is positively charged i mean that is it is on the positive x axis fq1 is along the positive x axis look at fq1 right here plus fq2 cos theta okay i should have cos theta the angle right here if it is theta is supposed to be equal to the angle right here okay and what should that angle be this is supposed to be a right angle triangle and i should have 45 right here 45 right here since this is a right angle triangle so this is supposed to be 45 so fq2 if i resolve it to the x-axis i should have fq2 okay as a subscript i should have it as a subscript fq2 cos 45 okay and it should be i as well because it is along the positive x axis so i will add it to f q2 sine 45 which is along the positive y axis so eventually i should have something of this nature what is fq1 fq1 is 0 0.45 i plus what is fq2 times cos 45 cos 45 is supposed to be root 2 over 2 which is 0 0.707 if i multiply that with fq2 which is 0 0.288 i'll have 0 0.20 0 0.204 0 0.204 i plus i need to multiply sine of 45 I need to multiply it with, with FQ2, which is 0 0.288. And that is the same thing, 0 0.204J. So the ones with I, I will need to add them together. So 0 0.204 plus 0 0.45. And that's equal to 0 0.654. 0 0.6. 654i plus 0.204j okay so that's it that's the magnitude i mean that's the total force that's the total force i can find the magnitude of that force by saying that the magnitude of force on q is equal to the square root of 0 0.654 squared plus 0 0.204 0 0 squared and that should be equal to square root of 0 0.654 squared plus 0 0.204 squared okay that's equal to 0 0.685 0 0.685 and that's in newton that's the magnitude of the resultant force now to note its direction its direction that means that force is like this because we have positive 
this and the i means on the positive x axis so we have 0 0.654 and we also have 0 0.204 on the positive y axis okay so the resultant is a line from the middle all right with angle theta right here to show the direction so angle theta right here angle theta right here means that this is the opposite and the opposite is the same thing as this line that's 0 0.204 so that means angle theta is equal to arctan of what of 0 0.204 divided by 0 0.654 oh let me get rid of that space okay All right, so I should have 0 0.204 opposite over adjacent 0 0.654. Okay, so actan of 0 0.204 upon 0 0.654, and that's supposed to be equal to 17.32 in degrees, and that's the direction as a direction we can also call that we can i can call it if i want to do that i can call it 90 minus that answer that's 72 this place will be 72.67 or 68 i can call it or not 72.68 degree east okay you can check my video where I talk about resolution of vectors. I describe how to deal with directions, direction of vectors in a broad manner. Okay. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day. And I will drop more videos. Make sure you subscribe to this channel and check other videos that will be helpful. Thank you.